is Brook Green Gardens in Merles Inlet, South Carolina. There is so much to see and do at Brook Green Gardens. Here's a little sneak peek of their website. Tickets are $10 for children, 20 for adults, 18 for seniors, and this gives you admission for seven consecutive days. The botanical gardens are amazing. The property is over 9,000 acres. There is so many beautiful plants to see. You can read for yourself on the website in a lot more detail with fascinating things like the 250 year old live oak trees that were planted in the 1700s and other interesting details about the gardens. You can look at the plant collection and find out the different names of all of the different plants that they have on the property. They don't have photos of everything but they do have a pretty nice index. You can also check to see what's in bloom for each season. They do say that there is something always in bloom year round, but here you can specifically see what to look for depending on what season it is. The sculptures are very impressive. They have over 2000 works by 430 artists. Literally everywhere you look, there's a sculpture. There are a couple of different excursions you can do while you are there. We chose the Creek Excursion, which is a ride on a pontoon boat. And yes, we did see alligators. There is a commentator giving details about the history of the area. There are a couple of other tours that you can learn about on their website as well. They do have a small zoo. I don't like to see animals in captivity, but they say that all of the animals that they have there have either been born there or were rehabilitated and could not otherwise survive in the wild. So now that you have an idea of what this place is all about, I'm going to share all of the footage that we got while we were there. I hope you enjoy the video.
Springfield and Laurel Hill plantations on the north end of our property and the Oaks plantation on the south end, four adjacent plantations. And plantation life here had pretty much run its course. <clears throat> it was over by the early 1900s. And in 1930, a couple named Archer and Anna Huntington came down from New York and acquired all four of the old plantation properties, 9,127 acres worth of land. So obviously the Huntingtons were not having money problems. Uh, Archer Huntington was from a family, uh, the same family that Huntington Beach, California is named after. They built huge railroad systems out west. They were partly responsible for the first transcontinental railroad in the country. Uh, a big hand in the big shipyards in Newport News, Virginia, coal mining. I mean, there was a lot of money in that family. Uh, Archer himself was a poet, a philanthropist, and a scholar, and his wife, Anna Huntington, she was a famous sculptor. She was also one of the wealthiest women in the country. And she had tuberculosis. That's what brought them to South Carolina to begin with. Her doctors told her to go to a warm climate to recover, and they also were going to use it as a winter home. Uh, the Huntingtons, though, changed their mind and decided they wanted to share this with everybody and they turned it into the country's first public sculpture garden, opening in 1931. Uh, she being a sculptor, had always wanted to present sculptures in an outdoor setting, and many of her works were animal sculptures, which she thought would show better in an outdoor environment, and obviously it turned out to be a good choice. Uh, today, this is the largest collection of American sculpture anywhere in the world. It's a national historic landmark, and all 9,000 plus acres here is wildlife sanctuary. Uh, we'll certainly be on the lookout for wildlife today. <clears throat> if we see anything interesting, we'll slow down and uh, let you get a good look or snap a picture. If you're hoping to see alligators, we can't promise you anything. Sometimes we'll see 10 of them on one trip. Sometimes we don't see one all day long. It's a hit or a miss thing. We have no control over that. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll hope for the best. If we're lucky, we'll get to see a few. Uh, I mentioned plantation life. Uh, that does not mean cotton or tobacco. That's typically what people associate with the South with. But in coastal South Carolina back in the day, the big money crop was rice. And as a matter of fact, at one time, the port of Georgetown was exporting more rice than any port in the entire world. And it was done primarily along the coast. And it was done because of the tidal effect that occurs in the creeks and the rivers along the coastline here. OK, you got an alligator swimming along here right in front of us. Wow, he's being brave. Usually they go underwater before then. And there he goes heading over in that direction. All starts to look the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good sized gator right there. Now you would assume, most people do, that the biggest danger for the slaves working in the swamps here was alligators. However, alligators rarely attack the men and do rarely attack people. As long as you give them some distance, they'll leave you alone. But of course, if you get near one, um, all bets are off the table.